In many ways, Jackie Roosevelt Robinson was the beginning, but also the end. He was the beginning of change, not only in baseball, but in American society. His breaking of the color barrier also signaled the end of the Negro Leagues. And a lot of people don't know that Jackie Robinson's illustrious professional baseball career began in Kansas City in 1945 with the Kansas City Monarchs. The question that is so commonly posed to me is, was he the best player in the Negro Leagues? And the answer is no. There were other Negro League veterans who were far superior baseball players to Jackie Robinson. And that is not to disparage Jackie Robinson because he is one of the greatest athletes in American sports history. He was a four sports star at UCLA. Baseball was his weakest sport, but Jackie Robinson was absolutely the right man to be the first. So he's college educated. He had served in the military. He was disciplined. He would become married to the beautiful Rachel Robinson. He was stable. You see, Jackie had what I like to refer to as the intangible that better prepared him to deal with the immense racial hatred that he would be confronted with, which is part of the reason why he was the chosen one to break Major League Baseball's color barrier. Certainly, in my own opinion, had it not been for World War II, I don't think Jackie Robinson gets invited to try out for the Monarchs. The Monarchs roster had been decimated by World War II. Buck O'Neill serving in the Navy. Hank Thompson, he serving in the Army. Monarchs Hall of Fame outfielder Willard Brown is serving in the Army. So if the Monarchs have their full roster intact, Jackie Robinson never gets invited to try out. And how would history have been altered? Jackie Robinson would make his Kansas City Monarch debut on May 6, 1945. He goes one for four with a run scoring double and stole the base in the Monarchs win over the Chicago American Giants. He's off and running. He would put together a stellar 1945 season with the Monarchs, one worthy of him being invited to play in the East-West All-Star Game. Of course, by the end of that 1945 season, Jackie had disappeared. He was plucked away by the Brooklyn Dodgers.
Jackie did not like his time in the Negro League. And it wasn't because he didn't have great respect for the talent that was there in the Negro League. Jackie Robinson hated the fact that he had to play in a Negro League. Jackie's mindset was that if I have the talent, I should be able to play in whatever league is available to me. And Jim Crow did not sit very well with Jackie Robinson. He was Los Angeles. He's California. So he wasn't accustomed to some of the things that the players in the Negro Leagues were having to endure. Long bus rides, going into towns where you weren't sure where you could get something to eat or have a place to stay. So life in the Negro Leagues left a bit of a sour taste in Jackie Robinson's mouth. Dodge a half of the second, Jackie Robinson leads off. Well, Jackie Robinson was a tremendously gifted athlete. He quickly adopted that style of play that was signature Negro League baseball. Bold, brash, aggressive. And that's what he took with him over to Major League Baseball. And he was driving Major League pitches crazy by stealing bases, and particularly his knack for stealing home. And of course, that was his nod to the Negro League. Jackie Robinson walks out on that field on April 15, 1947, and I draw the parallel of Jackie Robinson's breaking of the color barrier to carrying the same euphoria that we saw as a nation when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. And for black folks, Jackie Robinson's debut with the Brooklyn Dodgers, he became the first man to walk on the moon. 21 million black folks were counting on him and carrying the weight of an entire race, being thrust into a world where no one wanted you to be there. It was just a thing of beauty. It was electrifying, and it was exciting, and it was truly captivating. We were counting on Jackie to succeed. Because his success was seen as advancement for a race of people who had been belittled for so long. That is an enormous amount of pressure for any one man to have to bear. In a game that is predicated on failure, 
he can't fail. Who knows how long it would have been before another black man would have gotten the opportunity to play in the major league. Somehow, Jackie Robinson summoned the will to perform at an incredible level. He earned the very first Rookie of the Year award, and he did so carrying the weight of an entire race of people on his shoulders. Here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, we make the bold assertion that Jackie Robinson's breaking of the color barrier wasn't just a part of the Civil Rights Movement, it was the beginning. This is 1947. This is before Brown versus the Board of Education. This is before Rosa Parks' refusal to move to the back of the bus. As my dear friend, the late great Buck O'Neill would so eloquently say, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr was merely a sophomore at Morehouse College when Robinson signs his contract to play in the Brooklyn Dodgers organization. President Harry S. Truman would not integrate the armed forces until a year after Jackie. So for all intents and purposes, this is what started the ball of social progress rolling in our country. So for those of you who subscribe to the belief that one person cannot invoke change, you need to look no further than one Jackie Robinson. Fans, opposing players, he talked about all the people who are going to be anti. He said, we're going to have some people on our side, but we really are not going to have very many allies. We're going to have to do this thing simply by the box score.